Well, what do you know? It's been more than a week, so it must be time for another hearing designed to inflict insult and injury on 700,000 disenfranchised Americans living in the nation's capital. Not only do our esteemed GOP colleagues want to block the statehood drive of our fellow Americans from Washington, D.C., and permanently deny them voting representation in the United States Senate and the United States House, not only do they want to roll back home rule, micromanage the D.C. Council, and blame them for the problems caused by their second class political status, now they want to lecture them about democratic elections and voting rights while making it far more difficult for D.C. residents to register and to vote in the elections that they do get to vote for, for the few offices open to them, like D.C. Council, School Board, and Mayor. So while the GOP is pushing the ACE Act to empower states to clamp down on voting rights nationally, they also seek to directly impose this extreme anti-voter, anti-democratic legislation as a political straitjacket on the people of Washington, D.C. While Republicans claim to be advancing election integrity, the bill's obvious aim is to disenfranchise people and to make it more difficult to vote. And there's a history of this. In Democracy in America, Tocqueville observed that democracy in our country is always either shrinking and constricting under attack, or it's growing and expanding. And surely it's time for us to get back on the growth track and to stop these assaults on voting rights. But Republicans have thrown away the legacy of President Lincoln and now embrace the big lies and electoral corruption and manipulation of Donald Trump, who runs their party like an authoritarian cult of personality. Instead of bringing the people of Washington, D.C. into the union on an equal footing with the people of the 50 states, they seek to bring the disenfranchisement and political marginalization afflicting D.C. to people all across America with their proposals for tactical voter suppression, election repression, and registration depression. And what's the justification for their sledgehammer attack on local elections in Washington today? There is none. D.C. already has free, fair, and secure elections for the public offices that are open to the people. In fact, D.C. has some of the most accessible and secure elections in the country. Through its pro-voter laws, D.C. has one of the highest registered voter rates in the country. And the local non-citizen voting policy identified by the chair is just for local elections, not for D.C.'s non-voting delegate in the House of Representatives. And this policy, by the way, follows up upon what was a central article of faith for the Republican Party in the 19th century, that people who come to the country as immigrants who are on the pathway to citizenship should have the right to vote and participate in local and school board elections. And I would uh, uh, refer to my friend from Wisconsin, a unanimous decision of the Wisconsin Supreme Court in 1863 called In Re Waylitz, unanimously upholding Wisconsin's longstanding practice of granting non-citizens the right to vote at every level of government uh, in Wisconsin. And of course, President Lincoln, if you study the history, was a great champion of giving non-citizens uh, the right to vote in our country, which is why uh, a lot of people, um, his opponents, uh, anti-immigrant opponents, argued that he was in a public office illegitimately because of the immigrant vote in Illinois, Wisconsin, and New York. But in any event, um, uh, the Heritage Foundation's election fraud cases database identifies zero instances of voter fraud in Washington, D.C. since 1979. That's no election fraud in the nation's capital in the last 44 years. And D.C.'s very strong pro-voter, pro-registration policies are clearly conducive to election integrity and have not led to any episodes of voter fraud that I'm aware of, but perhaps the majority has some in mind. Uh, the only plausible reason for this legislation today is for people who really know nothing about local Washington, D.C., beyond Capitol Hill, to use D.C. as a whipping post, a guinea pig, and a sacrificial lamb in their effort to constrict the vote and depress participation nationally. With this hearing, our friends in the GOP have moved from the macro suppression of representation, voting rights, and political voice in Washington to the micro suppression of local voting rights to keep people from even getting to the polls to cast ballots for candidates for the few offices that DC residents are actually allowed to fill. This bill is unnecessary, unfair, undemocratic, and unworthy of this body.
Thank you, and I yield back.